you to today's webinar. My name is Sue and uh, I'm a product manager at Medit. So today we'll discuss one of Dr. Kim's digital treatments, 3D printed laminate for closing gaps between teeth. As always, Dr. Kim, thank you for being here. Hello everyone and hi Sue. Thank you for having me. Today's topic is 3D printed laminate for treating diastema as you mentioned. With 3D printed laminate, you can create laminate in house using your 3D printer. So your patient can receive them faster. 3D printed laminate can also be thinner than milled laminate and can have a deeper receiving shape from the interproximal to the lingua, making them a more effective solution for black triangle. It sounds very interesting. Uh, but before we get started, I just want to remind everyone that this uh, webinar is being recorded. It will be available on our YouTube channel or online training platform uh, soon after the webinar is done. And we'll also have a Q&A session after his slide. And as always, this uh, webinar is pre-recorded. So we got questions in advance via email. So Dr. Kim will answer them after his slide. All right, uh, doctor, uh, could we get started? Sure. Let's get started with 3D printed laminate lecture. This is the second lecture introducing final prosthesis using relatively accessible 3D printing technology in the clinic. The first one was about cervical treatment and today I will be talking about the second one, laminate. In today's lesson, we will talk about through the process of designing 3D printing and setting 3D printed laminate. The purpose of the laminate treatment are summarized below. First, color improvement. If the teeth are stained or naturally dark in color, laminate can be used to make them lighter and whiter. Second, Shape modification. If the teeth are damaged or have a naturally irregular shape, laminate can be used to complement or improve the shape of the teeth. Third, resizing. Laminate can also be used to make small or abnormally sized teeth larger or to fill in spaces between teeth. Fourth, protection. If the teeth are weakened and at risk of further damage, laminate can act as a shield to protect them. A common laminate material is ceramic. However, in-house production is limited due to the high cost of processing equipment and materials. Let me introduce you to the possibility of 3D printed red laminate. To compare the materials, a laminate on tooth number 22 was fabricated with Mark II, Trilux Forte, and Anamic. The patient chose Trilux Forte because it shows natural color in multiple layers rather than single color materials like Mark II and Anamic. Compared to ceramic laminates, resin laminates have the following characteristics. First, conservative treatment. Compared to ceramic laminates, they can be fabricated thinner, which means that less of the tooth needs to be removed. This allows us to work with as much of the tooth structure as possible. Second, speed. Resin laminates are usually simple and quick to fabricate and set up. Third, convenience. Compared to ceramic, they are easier to repair. Fourth, cost. Resin laminate typically cost less than ceramic laminate. The 3D printed laminate is built in the following order. The first step is intraoral scan. If the space between the teeth is too narrow to separate them, you can scan in HD mode. The HD mode is advantageous for aligning acquired scan data because it can acquire more detailed data, such as sharp edge from scan object with a narrow area. However, when HD mode is used, 
The post-processing time of scan data is longer than when it is not used. Let's design a laminate using the Medit Design app. Here's a flow chart of how to design it. Isolate and duplicate the teeth from the model and prepare two meshes as a result. One is offset to provide the thickness of the laminate. The other will block out in the direction of insertion to subtract from the offset mesh. Let's go through them one by one. Launch the Medit Design app. Select the upper and lower jaw model. Use Edit Mode. Let's separate the tooth from the model. Run the duplicate function. Select tooth number 12 using the Smart Single Tooth Selection feature. Switch to a brush to retouch around the margin. Once you've finalized your tooth selection, click Finish to duplicate the tooth. Press Done one more time to create another identical mesh. As a result, you will have two replica meshes. Fill the hole in one of the two duplicated teeth. You can use the Fill Hole function. Depending on the shape of the hole, there could be an error. If you get an error, you can use the bridge function to reshape the hole to make it work. If it doesn't work the first time, you can do it one more time like this to fill in the holes. Create a shell that gives the laminate thickness to the teeth we filled the hole with a moment ago. Prepare the outer surface of the laminate by giving the hole filled mesh an offset of 0.1 mm. Let's call this mesh A. Use the sculpting function to fill in the gaps with neighboring teeth and refine the shape of the laminate. Select the sculpting feature. The mesh to be referred is wrapped to prevent deformation. Use the add or bolting function to fill in the spacing and modify the appearance of the laminate. Block out the single remaining mesh in the direction of the insertion. Select the block out feature. Select the second duplicated mesh. Modify the insertion direction to account for the laminate insertion direction. Press Done to generate the mesh. Select the sculpting feature. Smooth out sharp edge with the smoothing feature. To add a cement gap, we use the offset function. Select the mesh you blocked out and give it a 0.03 mm offset. Let's call this mesh B. Subtract the scan file and the mesh B from the mesh A and you have the inside of the laminate. Select the boolean function. In difference mode, put the mesh A on the left and the scan file and mesh B on the right and click run it. If there is debris, use the delete function to clear it. Let's analyze the result of our design. Take a cross section and measure the distance between the sections. Right click to bring up a pop-up menu 
and select show this only which will leave a cross section and make others invisible. You find that the cement gap is 0.03 and the laminate thickness is 0.07. This is what the finalized laminate looks like. Let's take a look at what you need to consider when outputting your designed laminate. If the layer thickness is 100 micrometer, the layers are clearly distinguishable which is insufficient for use as a final process. At 30 micrometer, the layers are barely visible. Printing at 50 micrometer results in a smooth and shiny surface finish. Reducing the layer thickness increases the quality of the output, but it takes a lot of time. Imagine that the fat is filled with resin. The layer thickness is represented by a scale. When the build plate comes down, there is resistance in the resin, so it takes time to fully position itself. This time depends on the viscosity of the resin. If you don't wait long enough and photopolymerization starts, it will start to cure. This will cause it to glow in size to the side. It can also cause bubbles to form in the resin, which can cause strength issues. I haven't found an exact name for this phenomenon. We will just call it the jelly effect and move on. 0.5 to 1 second is generally enough for the resin to stop moving. However, it takes longer for viscous resin to get still, so then you will need longer rest time after it wrecks. While low viscous resin will need a shorter rest time. If you don't have enough light of delay time, your print may have an even surface called blooming. Considering all these cases, it is very difficult to have the perfect output for different situations. However, this problem can be perfectly solved by using sensors that check whether the four corners of the plate have come down enough. A printer with this feature allows for free size output, making it ideal for use as a final dental prosthesis. You should consider the following when choosing a printer and material. These are the printers I have been using recently. I printed laminates with 15 micrometer layer thickness on each printer to verify the output result. Different printers may produce different output results. Design a laminate on an intraoral scan of a tooth. Print out the tooth and laminate. Combine them together and scan them to check for output errors. On the left is the scan file and on the right is the result of 21 and 22 laminate design. Run Medit Design app. In Medit Design, select and import the original file and the print result file. Use the split view option located on the side toolbar to work with two sets of data simultaneously. This option is available during overview and deviation display modes. Select the deviation display mode. In split view mode, we'll do the data assigned twice. In reference, put the combined scan file and laminate CAD. Put the output from each printer into target one at a time. You can see the error range in color. Since the maximum error is between 0.3 to 0.4 mm, we make the error range 0.4. We change it to 0.05 to represent the clinical tolerance in green. If you think the color bar, its value will change on both sides if you change it for one of the data set. To check the exact measurement, click on the specific position on the data. Run measurement mode. 
make a cross cut of the area. Right click to bring up a pop up menu and select Show this only, which will leave a cross section and make others invisible. In cross section, tooth number 11, where there is no laminate, the model printing error value is 48 micrometer. In cross section tooth number 21, a relatively thin laminate, we see a error of 70 micrometer on the wise printer and 351 micrometer on the left printer. In section tooth number 22, a relatively thick laminate, errors of 55 micrometer and 173 micrometer are found respectively. Let's show the cementing process of the finished laminate. Clean the tooth thoroughly. Exit edge, wash, and dry in that order. Treat the adhesive with the manufacturer's recommended method. Apply the floor of resin to the inside of the laminate as a cement. Position the laminate, position the positioning jig, Remove excess cement with dental floss and photopolymerize. Finish the treatment by trimming with a resin polishing instrument. All right, uh, next, let's move on to the Q&A session. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, this webinar is pre-recorded, so here are some questions we already got. And uh, Dr. Kim will answer those questions right now. However, if we want to manage to all answer all your questions today, the replies will be sent to your email address soon. Or if you have questions or any feedback, please send an email to meditedu at medit.com. All right, uh, let's, uh, let's look at the first question. How long does it take to print out the laminate on your 3D printer? I would also like to know what type of 3D printer you're using. The printing time is most affected by the layer thickness. If you print with a layer thickness of 50 micrometer to use as a final prosthesis, the printing time will be approximately 2 to 3 hours. These are the printers I've been using lately. The printer on the left is a relatively inexpensive printer that produces quite good quality output. However, it requires a certain amount of knowledge and experience to use it well. The printer on the right is relatively expensive, but it automatically manages any problem that may arise during printing, making it very convenient for beginners. Go to question number two. Does Medic shade taking function work for you? If so, how accurate is it? Recently, I sent a patient without shade taking for an anterior crown, so I used the smart shade guide to make the crown and finish it well. All right, next question. Do you design the laminate yourself? Are you going to do the webinar on tips for designing a laminate or any appliances in the future? The designs for patients are done by the dental technicians. The example video I showed today was designed by me. I will continue to post the video of design with Medit Design in the future. The last question today, it is hard to capture anterior teeth, especially the maxilla. Can you please share the tips and tricks to scan the maxilla anterior teeth? 
Maxillary anterior teeth will only scan lingually if you are not careful. If the buccal side is scanned when returning from the opposite end of the arch, the incisal edge is likely to be open in the buccal lingual direction as errors accumulate. Therefore, in the anterior region, you need to scan both buccal and lingual side while changing the angle of the scanner to avoid this error when moving to the other side. All right, uh, that's all we prepared today. As always, thank you so much for joining this webinar and um, thank you for being here, doctor. I would like to thank you for watching this webinar. We are here to help. So if you have any question, let us know. I will see you in the next webinar. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you can watch this webinar on our embedded online platform after we are done. And as Dr. Kim mentioned, we would love to hear your questions, feedback, or any ideas. So please send an email to meditedu at medit.com and we'll get back to you soon. Thank you all. And I look forward to seeing you in the next webinar. Take care. Bye. Bye.